Welcome back to this series of brief tutorials explaining how to perform reproductive analysis in Excel following the instructions in the standard operating procedure linked in the description below. This presentation is on sex ratios. Uh, there are three types of sex ratios that are going to be calculated in this uh, worksheet. Uh, as before, this presentation assumes that you've already loaded your data into the data worksheet of this Excel spreadsheet. If not, follow the directions in the video linked in the description below. So when your data are entered, most of the work has been done for you. Um, here we're going to look at overall sex ratios. This is the number of females for every one male when you consider all individuals in the population. So what's happened here is that Excel has counted uh, the number of individuals that were males and it's counted the number of individuals that are females. And then we're going to perform a chi-square test uh, com comparing these values to what would have been expected if there was a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, and if there were a one-to-one -one ratio, there would have been 274 uh, individuals of both sexes. Down here, we calculate the actual sex ratio, which shows us there's uh, 0.92 females for every one male. Here we have calculated the p-value for the chi-square statistic, and that p-value is 0.347. Anytime that p-value is lower than 0.05, there's a significant difference. If it's higher than 0.05, which it is here, there is no significant difference. In other words, the chi-square test cannot tell the difference from 1 to 0 0.92 or 1 to 1, given the population that we've examined. Another thing we've thrown in here, sometimes uh, journals like you to report it, is the chi-square uh, statistic. Okay. But the, the key uh, item here is whether or not uh, this p-value is less than 0 0.05. Another uh, sex ratio that's automatically calculated for you is the operational sex ratio. This one's different because it's looking at the sex ratio of only mature individuals. Overall sex ratio looked at all individuals. This one's looking at only mature individuals. So now we're looking at the number of mature males versus the number of mature females. Okay? And if this was a one-to-one -one ratio, we would have expected 143.5 of each sex. In this case, the sex ratio is one male for every 0.76 females. The p-value is 0.021. That's less than 0.05, so that's significantly different. Okay, so this is not a one-to-one -one sex ratio when you look only at mature individuals. And again, we have the, the uh, chi-square statistic. The last sex ratio that we want to look at, uh, we call size-specific sex ratios. And this is examining whether the proportion of males to females changes as length increases in this population. And just as we had to do for the uh, size of maturity value, we have to come up with the minimum size class. And here we've again set it up such that we're looking at uh, two uh, centimeter size bins. If you remember from the size of maturity uh, calculation that we did, the smallest individual was 16 centimeters. We're going to put that in here, and then everything is automatically calculated for us. Okay, so here are our size classes. Uh, we've counted, uh, um, let's see, the number of, oh, this is the average size class. Um, the average uh, size of the individuals in that size class, sorry, the number of individuals in that size class. Uh, here, um, Excel has counted the number of females and the number of males. Uh, then we've looked at the number of ex expected males and females if this was a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, this was the frequency of males to, or, or the proportion of males and the proportion of females. Okay? And this is a test of whether this is significantly different from one-to-one. -one. And here we can see uh, that it is. The bigger thing that I'd like to show you here is the trend. So we start off with uh, 0.76 proportion of females and that seems to progressively go down as length increases. If you want to look at it the other way, here we start off with a low number of males, 0.24 proportion of males that get increasingly uh, greater as size increases. Um, basically what you can see here is that for most cases, these are significantly different from one to one. Here, right when we're about the 50-50 the mark, it's not different from one to one. And here again, we are significantly different from one to one, except in this case, 
where there was only one individual, and that's probably the reason why the chi-square test couldn't detect a significant difference. Okay. We're going to come back in the next uh, example or the next tutorial and show you how to plot these data so you can visualize those patterns in the size-specific sex ratios.